finishing up uh, our budget work for 2015. The state uh, regulations require that we finish it by the 15th of December. Uh, I know it's an odd day, a Monday, for those of you out there watching intensely about what we're going to do today. Um, it is an odd day for us to be here. Um, I guess I'll first ask, which isn't on here, if there are any additions or deletions to the agenda. No additions or deletions to the agenda. Okay, we'll get right into some consent action items. We've got a uh, resolution appointing um, two citizen uh, volunteer board members. One is uh, Kalane uh, Gibney for the joint uh, APSHA board position, and then the other one is Sherry uh, Grinnell uh, for the Senior Services Council. Um, do we have a uh, motion to approve or any discussion? Move to approve. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those uh, in favor? Uh, yep. I'm not going to vote on this because I didn't, wasn't in on the interviews here. So. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Stain. Michael. Um, next, we have two emergency resolutions, and just for those of you for an explanation of why these have become emergency resolutions, and it's, I believe it's because they have to be passed in 2014 to be part of the 2015 budget, which is later on our thing, which means they will become effective immediately. There is a second reading set for January 14th, which is um, our first regular meeting in the new year, um, although because it's a, these are emergency ordinances, um, they are, uh, they take effect immediately upon passing of the first reading, even though a, um, a public hearing will be set for a confirmatory reading on January 14th. Okay. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> the two <clears throat> items here, I don't know, I don't know, John, if you're going to present anything, I can certainly queue it up. Um, the two items here are basically supplemental budget appropriations for 2014. They're all items that the board has discussed throughout the years in various lengths to, um, to move forward with, and this is just the uh, official appropriations of those items because we kind of, when we get a supplemental budget, we kind of give nods of head to move forward and to bring it back in a bulkier resolution that has uh, multiple items all at once so that we don't have to pass them all individually. This was continued from the last reading um, on the request of a couple of board members just to have further discussion and to have a full board on it, primarily because of one item, the CMAC grant money um, from the state. CMAC grant money is air quality money to mitigate some of the air quality issues that we have in our county. It's money that's distributed throughout the uh, um, throughout the state to various places that have air quality problems and that money could be used at the discretion of the county for various things that fit within the guidelines of the CMAC money. Um, we have had several discussions on this. Uh, the, the first time that we had the discussion on this um, I believe was mid-summer and, and hadn't really talked much about it since and we had talked and the board moved forward with um, the idea of doing some electric cars, some electric car stations. It was determined, in, um, and some of this is background, some of this is, is my recollection of things. It was determined at that time that we would go forward with figuring out how exactly that money would be spent, what types of cars, what types of charging stations, what the cost would be, where they would be located, those sorts of things. Those discussions did not necessarily fully happen, and, and we haven't fully gotten to that point yet. Um, although, since it's the end of the year, the CMAC money, it's either take it or lose it. And there was discussion among Michael and I, and Rachel and Steve were not here at the last meeting. There was, there was some concerns addressed from Michael and I, and I'll, I'll speak for myself, I suppose, that we should have more thought process go into this before we jump into it. And that was really my concern, that we hadn't had those conversations as to exactly <clears throat> what vehicles were going to be purchased, exactly where the charging stations were going to be, exactly what the ongoing forward costs were going to be, exactly what all those things were going to be. And um, as chair, I'll kind of take the liberty of ad addressing some of my opinion up first, and then obviously the other board members can address their opinions. I'm happy to move forward with this 
ballot question, but I want to make it's it. Not a ballot I mean, not ballot question. With this, <laughs> with this uh, emergency resolution today, with this supplemental budget, budget appropriations. Um, but I want to make it very clear to the public because there were a couple letters written to the editor about this. There was an article in the newspaper. It's our job up here as Board of County Commissioners to scrutinize the dollars that are being spent. It's our job to make sure that the dollars are spent of the, the wisest and the highest quality. And I believe we do a very good job of that. I believe 95 to 100 percent of the dollars we spent provide fabulous service. It doesn't mean that we should ignore that 5 percent and stop scrutinizing every dollar that comes through our this, this budget. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't ask the hard questions. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't have, a con, you know, from time to time, a conservative mind frame to say, are we spending these dollars wisely? I will give a perfect example to something that's very similar to this, which is our core grants. Our core grants go through a very hard scrutiny to the exact dollars and the carbon offset that they do. And they're also scrutinized down the road in terms of how they performed in their task when those grant dollars are accepted by those recipients. That's all I'm really asking to, us to do here. I'm asking us, I'm asking the board, which I won't, will not be a part of next year when these decisions come. And it's unfortunate that we made this decision in the middle of the summer. And it's unfortunate that we didn't go through the process of getting all the details before accepting this grant. But my job for the next month being on this board is to scrutinize those dollars and to say make sure that you make that you see that the best offset is done for the grant dollars that's really all i'm saying that's really all i was arguing and and it's nice to have a full board when voting on these things and it's nice to have a full board when having these discussions so that's uh i hope i gave enough background john i don't know if you want to add more to that um there's a little bit more in our packet um, but uh, so I gave my background and, and some of my two cents. <laughs> I would just note for the, the board that we did come prepared to talk in a little bit more detail uh, about the electric proposed electric car purchases. Rob, uh, you are right. We originally presented this appropriation uh, in the middle of the summer. We then went through a very lengthy process with CDOT to get the contract language nailed down and um, as we, we went through that to get to the RFP process. So we're just now getting to the point where we have the information as always staff's intent to honor our commitment to the board to, to come back and have that fuller discussion before any of these, these funds were spent on electric vehicles or charging infrastructure. Um, that just didn't match up to our statutory requirements as, as you've noted. Um, but I, I know uh, we, we have Brian here today. Um, it's really the board's pleasure if you'd like us to present a little additional information uh, about the electric vehicles and talk about that item now. Uh, we're prepared to do that or uh, if, if the board is ready to engage in its own discussion, obviously we're ready to hear that also. Steve? Uh, I would, would like to hear from Brian what kind of the update on where the process is and um, looking at the electric cars because there's a lot of them out there to look at and it's a you know a pretty involved process mm -hmm. deciding which would be the best fit for us so I'd like I would like to hear where we are in that process great come on up Brian I think you're gonna this will be a, a hopefully a fairly simple explanation you're gonna see two charts the I'll just pass these out and then I'll walk through. And Brian, we might put one on the Elmo here so the public can see it. So I would love to sit here and take credit for this work, but I can't. This comes from our fleet manager, uh, Jonah Frank, uh, did most of the legwork here to do a vehicle life cycle comparison of four different types of vehicles. Uh, they are similar in nature. 
But before I get into it, I, just to step back with regard to CMAC and where we are with CDOT right now, we do not have an intergovernmental agreement struck with them. Uh, we really waited on some of this information be, until state bids came out on these vehicles so we could actually nail down exactly what the cost would be. So these are round figures and good estimates, but uh, the state bid for these vehicles has, has not been distributed yet. So on the first chart, you've got four, uh, four different vehicles, uh, two Ford Focuses and two Ford C-Max. Uh, the one on the left is the fully gas Ford Focus. And then we go into a hybrid, the standard hybrid, and then you go into a plug-in hybrid, and then you go to the fully electric Ford Focus. We assumed uh, $3 a gallon gas. We assumed 13,500 miles. And we assume that none of these are lemons and they're very similar in mechanical uh, needs. Uh, the difference with the gas and the electric, of course, gas has to have its oil changed and all the services that uh, internal combustion engines require. Uh, the first line there, I went through, uh, you'll see the gas mileage. Uh, you'll see the vehicle cost next, what it costs to get into the, uh, to purchase the car. The cost of gas. Uh, the total um, mile per gallon based on uh, the year of use, uh, the fuel cost, and then we, that's where you'll start to see the difference in the vehicles is in the maintenance cost. As you see, the internal combustion engine cost a little bit more to maintain based on that service required. And then we went ahead and put in uh, uh, carbon dioxide uh, produced per year just because uh, we thought that was a variable that the board might be interested in. Uh, and in the end, after 10 years of ownership, assuming that they last that long, uh, you'll see the difference in overall cost. And what I would focus on, because I'm going to transfer this to the next chart, is the difference between the Ford Focus full gas and the Ford Focus full electric. It's about $8,636 after 10 years of ownership. So then we go down to the next chart, where we have our program, what we would be proposing to uh, complete with the board if these numbers work out with a state bid and we finally get a contract with the state of Colorado, is to purchase three vehicles. And uh, you'll see the cost there um, and the comparison between the fully electric and the gas. And then we would need to install two charging stations uh, at Public Works where these would be located. and. Uh, based on utility extensions that would need to happen in order to get uh, the stations put into place, we estimate that cost at about $40,000. And so we amortize that over the 30-year uh, life expectancy of the charging stations. They might last longer, we, uh, but we were conservative on that estimate. And uh, then, you, then we derive the 10-year life cycle cost of the program. We feel that this would save money for the county, and we think it's a good way to step into the EV uh, uh, program. It's a good way to use grant monies. Uh, the CMAC money can, <coughs> can be spent in other uh, regards. We've spent it in various different ways in the county, but we think that this is a good program to try. We think it makes sense uh, environmentally, and we, make, we think it makes sense budgetarily. If there's any questions about these charts, I'd be glad to try to explain them. Yeah, just um, first, just for clarification, the, the units here, because you've got fuel cost $3, $3, $3, $3, and then you've got fuel cost 0.08. Is that per kilowatt per, you that's know, is that, correct. so that's a kilowatt hour. Yeah. And is that, when you do your equations with that fuel you're used per year. So you're anticipating for however many miles you're driving per year that you're going to use 3,000 kilowatt hours? That's correct. So the, the fuel mileage city and highway, where do you get 110 and 99 for the fully electric? Is that 110 per kilowatt hour the EPA has <coughs> created EV equivalents electric vehicle equivalents yeah. for miles per gallon I believe that is so if you look on an electric vehicles window sticker you're gonna see an EV equivalent mile per gallon that's where they try and convert um, 
roughly the the energy Electric usage from a too. gallon of gas. How they did that calculation, Rob, I don't think we could um, probably explain today. So those are those are city and highway costs. So what are, what's the anticipated mileage per year on one of these vehicles? Thirteen thousand five hundred miles per year is what we assumed for the chart for all of the vehicles. Oh, it's up on top the there. I say for all the vehicles, yeah. and it it could be, it could be less. Yeah. I just made an assumption. And the the analysis is sensitive to you know a number of things. Obviously, the price per gallon of gas is is pretty elastic. Electric doesn't tend to be quite as elastic. Um, so there will be some sensitivity there. The um, time frame that the vehicles actually last, you know, this is over a 10 year time frame. And so when you have a situation where you've invested more up front and your savings come Later. On, the, on the back end, you know, let's say these vehicles we find only actually have a useful life of five years. We don't have a lot of experience yet with the electric vehicles. Um, that savings may turn into an expense at, at that point. But uh, it, it's not unreasonable uh, to assume that at 13,000 plus miles per year that the vehicles would have a useful life of 10 years. That's a expectation. That's what we uh, drove the analysis to. Uh, Rachel? Yeah. Um Oh, I just will jump right in. We've got other things on our agenda as well. And, um, you know, I'd like to thank the board members who were here when uh, Steve and I were at the Colorado uh, Springs, Colorado Counties Inc. Conference uh, during the last regular meeting. So I really appreciate you guys moving that forward so we could discuss it as a full board. And I certainly, you know, respect the scrutiny. I think it's good that we sent our staff back to do more of this type of comparison. And I understand some of the hang-ups of waiting for the state bids to come in. So we, we had a little more uh, pure cost information. Um, but I also think that this isn't a pure dollar or pure cost decision for me, uh, although I think they're very uh, comparable. Um, you know, we're seeing uh, a lot of politics being played with oil right now, might be the best way to describe it, where uh, the production from OPEC and others is maintaining at a, a super high, the market's gotten glutted. Uh, you know, you read some of the financial papers and they'll say the purpose of this glut is to try to basically derail the American energy production that's going on with oil and gas and that you know this is uh, swamp it long enough and a lot of those current plays for fracking in the US become unprofitable under a 70 or 60 dollar a gallon range and so it, you know I just feel like I've seen this before I've seen the tap turned on I've seen the tap turned off and while it's you know turned off everyone starts buying more fuel efficient cars and the prices go up and then when oh my gosh people are getting too efficient the price goes down <laughs> and then suddenly gasoline cars become more you know affordable um, and that back and forth I think just really isn't isn't valuable for us um, as a country. Um, I think you guys know I've been working on a climate change resiliency project with uh, CML down in Denver for the state of Colorado. How prepared are we for climate changes? Um, I've been very keyed into those issues and I think we all struggle with the chicken and egg nature of climate change and oil and gas and should you be a first adapter or should you wait till other people have done that? You know, um, but I feel it's important in this very small way, in this very few numbers of vehicles out of our fleet to make the step forward to some electric vehicles. And particularly for me, it's like if we don't begin to create the framework for plug-ins and for electric for the general public as well as ourselves, it'll never happen. And that's why I get back to this chicken and egg thing. Well, I can't buy one of those cars yet because where am I going to refuel if I have to go to Glenwood and then somewhere else? And getting this infrastructure, the framework in which we as a country can begin to switch off of fossil fuels is a critical leadership role for me. Um, I think that right now we're all uh, maybe watching uh, the uh, climate change discussions in Peru. 
and they're not going that far. And it always comes down to money. It always comes down to, but how much is it going to cost us to start making that switch? And which countries can still pollute and which can't pollute? And who owes who what for what we've already done to the climate? And, you know, it, to me, it, yeah, short term, very practical considerations. We all, we all take those into effect and account, and I am. And then long term, it's more visionary. It's where do we want to end up in 15 years and 20 years and going forward? And so uh, I know that's a long um, bit of introduction to my logic on this, but that is why I would support the CMAC grant going forward with electric vehicles and charging stations for the county. Steve? Uh, I would agree with you on the ba basic thought process on that for sure, Rachel. Um, there's several things that come into play that I think we need to just remember and you know be aware of them one is that gasoline has been heavily subsidized by the US Our government military. for years <laughs> if yeah. we were paying the true cost of gasoline it would be probably seven or eight dollars per gallon uh, and, and that's that's not even looking at the costs of mitigation and damage from um, these weird storms that have been hitting the country and the costs of them that are being being driven by uh, climate change. Uh, so I think that if, if we ignore the three dollars per gallon, which we'll probably be, be paying way more than that, but looking at it from a society's point of view, if you figure we should be paying seven or eight dollars per gallon for gas, um, that really changes the whole equation. Uh, also, the eight cents per kilowatt hour, if we end up investing in a uh, some kind of a solar farm facility, we could, in effect, be getting our electricity f at the public works for free. Or, or a lot So we less. could be charging cars on, you know, not at eight cents, but at something way less than that. Um, another consideration is what is the range of these vehicles and all electric vehicle given the current range on them most of them I mean would we be able to go to Glenwood Springs and back in the car for instance if you and if we wouldn't be able to do that 80 mile round trip then we'd have to question whether it'd be wise to get these cars because an all-electric one right now, it, unless we had a Tesla, which we could drive to Denver, um, we're gonna, they're going to be limited here to the Roaring Fork Valley, given the current state of the charging stations and that sort of thing. So what is the, the range of the You know, I, I don't know exactly one. what the range of these are, but we expected them to be used locally for, by engineering to go look at job sites. We run in and out of town constantly. And so that would be the primary use for these vehicles. Uh, we looked at, you know, some of the long-range vehicles, but they're just, they're so expensive right now. And until that technology catches up, we're going to be using them locally. Yeah. And there are some, um, the either plug-in hybrids or like the hybrid combinations that would run on all electric if you're going a short distance. And you could drive to Denver and back using gas if you needed to on some of them um, so maybe that's what we would end up with is some all electric ones for use in the valley and some of the ones that you could go to Denver and back using get using the gas um, I'm on Ford's website and at highway speeds where it's the highest consumption it's looking like 76 gas free miles before a charge it varies so you could get maybe 85 to 90 yeah, or, or less, depending on you know, how you're driving and in and, and what conditions. But they are, we, we had considered the longer range vehicles, as you've mentioned, Steve, and the price point on those um, just didn't seem to meet the reasonableness test at this point. Yeah. Because they, they were um, easily two to three times um, the price of the yeah. vehicles that we have I, proposed. I'd agree with you. Yeah. On that. <laughs> um, but I'd be all in favor of, you know, setting a, an example for the community and 
of the country. Like, let's let's be on the forefront of this, and obviously, it's going to be a learning experience for us. And um, but you have to start someplace, and the time to start, I think, is right right now. George, uh, Brian. Um, we're waiting for the bids to come in, so we don't know exactly what the cost will be. We're going to hopefully piggyback off the state bids for their cars. So um, if there's monies left over, we have the ability to utilize them for other projects. For example, we've we've uh, used CMAC monies in the past uh, for WeCycle, so that, that's an option as well. Absolutely. We, we would need to get authorization, authorization through the state, but we can do that. That's correct. And we can carry that money over as need be. And uh, I, we have another $167,000 coming available in July of this coming year. So this, there's been delay in this program that we've got new CMAC money coming available. And I, my intent, if there were savings, is to put those two together so we could uh, do a different program. And, then, and then do we have any idea uh, when we'll get the bids in from, uh, from the the state we expected them to be there already we don't know what the delay is there's a list of vehicles and equipment that the st state purchases each year and we're just waiting for that list to be updated so any day okay well i support this uh the first go around and i still support this uh, uh, these numbers uh, reinforce uh that that this is actually not only uh, environmentally uh the way to go but it's actually economically uh, the way to go certainly for for our use which is going to be local in town I call yeah thanks oh, Brian for these figures I, uh, we needed them I think yes um, you know my objection isn't to electric cars per se it's it's really what use are we doing here and and what is the purpose of this grant um, and how we've used the grant in the past it's been it's been essentially, it's collected from public monies from the federal government and down through our state government and then distributed to us. And um, it's essentially been for public good and clean air. Um, the the uh, use that we put it to in the past has been the bridge at Woody Creek on the Rio Grande Trail, which has been a public amenity that allowed people to travel on the trail easily and and have a great experience on that bridge that bridge that bridge is a very nice bridge because you're about 30 feet in the air in a cottonwood forest and and you have a whole different sense of of what makes up this uh, this ecosystem here and this is a little tiny picture into it the other use we put it to is to buy a street sweeper for public works and it's for public works but it actually is a public benefit because we're picking up material with a street sweeper that actually contributes to the PM10, which is the, the source of this uh, grant. The, the uh, um, PM10 is particulates in the air of a certain size. And when you have gravel, and the city experiences, when you have gravel and you use that on the streets, it gets crushed. And when it gets crushed, it becomes in smaller and smaller particles, and the vehicles then raise this into the air and and uh, they're a danger to people's lungs it gets into your lungs and it can't be dislodged from your lungs so there's a public pur purpose here and I would submit to you that the public versus purpose of of having uh, um, public works have a vehicle is so limited to almost not be a public benefit so I would suggest, and I suggested in the past, that that bicycles, the purchase of bicycles, could be uh, a public benefit. And I, you know, I thought about it a lot. And um, you know, the idea that came to me was that we partner with the city of Aspen, and we purchase with the city of Aspen an electric bus for the Galena Street shuttle, and that becomes then satisfies the love affair that people have here with electric vehicles and but it also is a public benefit where people ride the bus in the area that has the most pm10 or potentially the most pm10 and it also performs the benefit of having a partnership with the city of aspen which we're always looking for good good partnerships so i would suggest that that's a far better 
public purpose than three vehicles for internal use, essentially, of the, of the county. And the charging stations don't contribute much to uh, an infrastructure of charging. If, you, if the public has to go to public works and park their car there and leave their car there to be charged, I, I just don't see that that connects to very much except public works and except the county. And of course, the, the, the third possibility is to build on our success and, and contribute to recycle, which has been a great success. And we've, we've used CMAC funds before to initiate the project. And there's no reason now not to further elevate that project. Though, I mean, those are, those are much better alternatives than the, than the internal use of three electric vehicles. Um, a lot hasn't been discussed here about electric vehicles. There's a lot of offset that, that isn't discussed here. But those batteries that are in electric vehicles are essentially a construction of Chinese rare earth materials that are highly limited and limited only to the Chinese. So, yeah, we may be developing a, a, a less of a dependence on fuel, but we're developing more of a dependence on a resource that's even, that's even less available than gasoline. And, of course, then the offset of there's no pollution on site for electric vehicles, but we're putting it somewhere else. Where are we putting it? Well, where there's electric generation, somewhere else, which I guess is convenient for us, but, but it's not exactly fair either. So, so I would go back and I would plead with this board to say, let's think of a more public use for these funds. Let's partner with the city of Aspen. Let's buy an electric bus with the city of Aspen. Let's put it into use in the locale that has the most PM10 and the most public benefit and the most ability to educate the public on the good of electric vehicles rather than three electric vehicles for the county. The county, on the other hand, should, should, should start a plan of, of limiting their use, not increasing their use, but limiting their use. So if the county wants to be really forward thinking, they need to say, we're going to travel 15,000 miles less this year than we did last year. And we'll find alternatives for that. So they have essentially are purchasing a mega car, as they would a mega watt. That's, that's progressive. That's thoughtful. Let's go ahead with that. But please, I would suggest, let's together think of a public project that we can spend this money on, not an internal county project. George? Um, you know, I think some of, those, some of your ideas are good, Michael, and I think we should revisit those when we get the second, this next uh, cycle of, of funding. Um, that next cycle of funding, does that go to the county or to the city? We alternate, don't we? Yeah, and so this is, we're delayed about two years with this one. So the city already has their $167,000. We will get ours in July. I'll, I'll talk to the city and see if uh, we want to join forces and, and see if we have a common program. We yeah, I think that's good for the future, but I, I, I would still support uh, public works needs to purchase some vehicles regardless, correct? Mm -hmm. those, those vehicles are going to be purchased through the general fund, which is public dollars. Correct. So we are being, I feel we're being actually very responsible in terms of utilizing these CMAC dollars uh, to purchase uh, electric cars versus having to purchase uh, fossil fuel cars. And if we do become a model similar to the city of Aspen, which has purchased some electric cars, it, it encourages perhaps the future potential for uh, other charging stations uh, to allow other consumers to, uh, to purchase. You know, the idea that, that we're, we're substituting one, one evil for another, fossil fuels for, for batteries that are being produced uh, from a, a very rare resource in China, that's an argument that was used when the hybrids first came out. And, and I know people drive uh, Priuses. And those Priuses, those batteries come from China. And, and so that's a, 
that's an impact as well. But I think um, today's uh, paper had a great article in terms of the work that RMI is doing with China and, and the idea of reinventing fire uh, and presenting that concept to China. And China is starting to embrace that idea that at some point we have to realize we need to get off fossil fuels and start to actually uh, get onto renewables. And, and this is a start. I think it's a good start for the county, and it doesn't um, negate other potential ideas that Michael has posed, which I would support down the road. Rachel. I, I agree with what George has just said, and uh, I would certainly agree that we continue to look at the best use of the funds as they become available. Um, it's taken a lot of work in a lot of different areas to become a non-attainment area for that PM10. Uh, the city's invested a lot of money, and it became everything from walking trails to bicycle programs to vigorous uh, street sweeping. Um, and uh, that dirt and the re-entrained PM10, uh, particulate matters below 10 uh, microns, happens from both electric vehicles, natural gas vehicles, or gasoline vehicles. But one of the big differences in air quality, especially given that these cars are going to be used more for local circulation in the upper valley where we frequently have temperature inversions and our air gets trapped down low, is the tons of carbon emission. I mean, I don't want to discount the lack of carbon emission into our atmosphere, and I think that that is a public good. And beyond that, if we go back far enough, uh, or not even that far, we've used these funds in the past for things that were internal to the county, such as purchasing the commuter vans to bring our employees up all in one vehicle from uh, Down Valley. I guess you could argue there was uh, five less cars in the roundabout in the morning, but it was definitely an internal program purchase that were, there were no public rides on those vehicles. And I think there's other opportunities to look back to things that were used uh, to improve uh, carpooling or commuting and sometimes even just to help set up the commuting line, things like that. So I, I, I can't buy into that argument as being a, a, a hard determination point. And I think as George has pointed out, if we bought these monies with the general fund, that's something else the general fund can't be used uh, for, um, for public good. So, you know, everything's a little connected. But uh, in order to move this along, um, I'm wondering which the, the, re the memo references that there were two resolutions, and the I'd CMAC like to... CMAC was pulled separately. Yeah, so it's a, on okay. the agenda, we have, we, we divided the budget approval into two separate action items. One action item is specific to the request to appropriate CMAC funds, and then the other item is uh, the other all, budget. everything else. Yeah. Okay, um, and so we'll need two separate uh, motions then I would uh, start if it's okay we didn't really discuss the supplementals do you want any presentation on that other than this one Rob or I don't, I don't but don't. why don't we work on the CMAC and then okay I would make a motion to approve uh, the resolution approving supplemental budget appropriations to the 2014 budget the CMAC grant second item number three second all right we have a first and a second uh, discussion I'm just gonna Michael, you want to go first, or yeah, go after me? yeah. I, I saw a, a cartoon in the New Yorker where, where where a salesman was selling a car and said, "Well, it runs on conventional gas, and then when it senses guilt, it runs on electricity." So uh, you know, which just sort of reminds me of this. I mean, everybody's mildly guilty about polluting the atmosphere, but I think um, I, I still think a better better source of of uh, a better use of these funds would be for a public purpose and rather rather than an internal purpose, uh, mainly from the education point of view, and because the more people that get the message about about uh, our goals, the better off we are, rather than just having three electric vehicles that are internal to the county. And that's my view, and I, I can accept it. And I wanted this discussion because I want people to thoroughly think about the issue. It's not quite as simple as uh, as you would have it. So um, that's all I wanted to say. Steve? I, I do like some of Michael's ideas that he's brought forward, especially with, uh, you know, putting some more money into something like the WeCycle and 
the concept of the Galena Street shuttle being electric would be would be awesome and that I think we'd have to do with you know with the city of Aspen it's it's a bigger more long range thing I, I would think but I, I was just wondering how much flexibility that you would have Brian say if we only got two electric cars because we're only going to have two charging stations for them anyhow um, and then take the extra money maybe we could could put that into um, a couple more we cycle stations or more bicycles or or some leave the option open to put it into something else along the lines of what Michael's suggesting we, we currently have that flexibility Um, I'll make another comment real quickly you know to me again I'll kind of reiterate a little bit what I started with this has to do with um, having a, a defined purpose statement and a defined process for the future and how these dollars are spent this is not the first time we've had like a last-minute decision on how we're gonna what we're gonna do with CMAC dollars and it seems like we should be a little bit more progressive on the fact that this is ongoing grants we see it happening next you know next year and we should have a process that follows a purpose statement for what we're doing I would disagree a little bit with what's been said about it being a benefit that it offsets our general fund that's not the purpose of this the purpose of this is to offset air quality mitigation um, and it's real dangerous to start saying we're just going to grab tax dollars to offset our general fund that to me is just bad you know process for how we spend our dollars you know there are a lot of people that pay taxes out there and they want general fund money to go through to good stuff and they want this money to go for what its purpose is for um, but hopefully we could be a little bit more like the core grants be a little bit more proactive in finding what the offsets are I mean we're we're basically talking in my opinion here to what this is doing is the difference between 5.6 mega um, 5.6 tons per year of co2 admissions to 2.4 and that's good but and i think it's a great step but what does it compare to what are the other processes that are out there um Myrta's in the audience from we cycle and she sent me an email saying that they could do so many new bikes and and three to four new stations with no matching funds from our general fund because they've got people that are willing to put that other money forward well, I'm sure there are a lot of programs out there that could utilize that money and maybe offset, instead of offsetting three tons per year, maybe there's something that offsets four, five, six, seven, ten tons. We just haven't had the process to do it properly. So hopefully the board with CMAC money next year will be proactive in creating some purpose statements for this and a process that allows for the best use of these funds. I'm all in favor of moving forward, but... Um, I, I don't think we did it 100% this year. Rachel. You know, I, I, I'm sorry, as this conversation continues to progress, I just really strongly disagree. To say we haven't had a crisis that because you're in the minority vote and haven't liked the outcome is very different from saying we had no process. We talked about these in I August. didn't say no process. Okay. I said not as good it, enough process as, as you possible. would like. We're in the 11th hour, and this is the first time we've seen this information, Rachel. I'm, I'm disagreeing with you, Rob, and you can disagree with me. But to say that we haven't had a sufficient process, when we talked about this in August, we gave our staff direction to go and pursue this in August. We know there's a trade-off and that there's a minority point of view on this board that doesn't like the outcome that this vote is going to have. Now, I, I can accept that. But then to, to say, oh, it was all wrong, we have to do it better next year, we didn't like the way it was done, we weren't thinking of all the alternatives, of course we were. And I would say, you know, you certainly put the type of scrutiny necessary, and I appreciate that value. When We Cycle first came forward, that was a really tough vote. Are we going to do We Cycle or not? That went on for probably three or four meetings. I don't know if that was the best process ever. And We Cycle was presented to us, and I'm a huge supporter of We Cycle, but it was a startup. It was going to be self funded, it was going to work on grants. And it was going to, you know, so we use that to get that program up and going the same way we're using this to maybe help get electrics up and going in our community. And I don't know that we will always get CMAC grants. You know, the transportation bill was uh, not reauthorized, and there's a discussion of not reauthorizing it again in May and just doing a six-month continuing resolution. It's highly likely that programs like this will be cut out 
and will be over for, for good. And I do look at 3.2 ton, tons of carbon dioxide reduction per year or 32 tons per 10 years in the upper valley per car. Per car, so that's 90 tons. Don't, don't say that that's not enough or that doesn't, isn't comparable to some of the reductions we'll see from people riding bicycles on WeCycle. And I've sat on the city council and spec'd out electric vehicles for a long time and when they're ready for a Galena Street shuttle bus or any of the others, I'd be happy to, to see us partnering with the city. But we were never able to find those type of vehicles on the market that were capable of delivering in our temperatures. And I'd also point out that the Galena Street shuttle only runs in the winter anymore. It doesn't run in the summer. So I don't want to put my money into a vehicle that parks and is not used <laughs> six months out of the year. And additionally, I think that when these vehicles are running around with our staff doing everything they need to do from building inspections to septic tank inspections and everything else, and it says picking county electrical vehicle on the side, that is going to have public benefit of moving this whole dialogue and climate change forward. So I, you know, I, I just feel that I, I don't like one-sided comments and I needed to present the other side. Well, for the record, I'm in the majority, I think. We haven't taken a vote yet, okay. but I'm voting for this. So okay. just for the record, I'm in the majority, not the minority here. I just think that when we do things, we have to scrutinize how we do things and do things better the next time. Okay. And if we lose that as a guideline for living our lives, we've really lost. Michael. Yeah, I, I, I think that Rob had a good point, and I don't think he needs to be attacked for having a good point. I, I think the, the uh, thorough scrutiny of the way we spend our money is, is a good place, a good departure point. And I, I would tend to agree with Rob that the scrutiny given to this was not as thorough as it could have been. In fact, these arguments are coming up very late in the, very late in the process. That doesn't mean that they're wrong. Um, and it doesn't mean that uh, we couldn't have more. And this, I think that's good. Every time we have long discussions, uh, we come up with a better result. So, so attacking someone for asking for more process, I don't think is particularly productive. And, and, and I think that um, we need to come to a better understanding that when people disagree, they don't need to be attacked for asking for better process. Um, and I also agree with Rob that we didn't have much process on this. Um, I objected when we first talked about it in the summer, but, but if it came to us in August and is now December and we hadn't heard anything at all except for this, this one information sheet, I would say that mm, the process is lacking. So going forward, I think what we can learn from this discussion is that we set our goals, we set some criteria. I would like to set a sort of a public benefit criteria, um, and and we go forward. That's all. Rachel. I do not feel that I attacked anyone, and I feel that if you're going to start calling things and attack Michael, the kind of subtly stated inference that there wasn't enough process to reach a different outcome than this vote is likely to have is an attack on other people for disagreeing with you. And I, I, I did not attack anyone, but I don't think that it's fair to say, I'm not going to like how this vote comes out, so we needed more process and would have gotten better results. And like acting as if this is a uh, half thought through decision because it's not the decision you would have made. And that's all I'm trying to say. Uh, can I just respond? Uh, the, Rachel, you have to realize that, that um, w when we were here, the three commissioners, uh, Rob and George and myself, we could have voted this down. We, we could have done that. And so, so the idea was, well, let's not do that. We, have, we had two commissioners at our last hearing that weren't in favor of this appropriation f for this purpose. But, but those commissioners said, well, wait a minute, let's have a full discussion. Let's, let's bring it in front of a full board and let's have a full discussion because we're, we're going to get more opinions, we're going to learn more. And um, that's the best process to have, which is exactly what we did. We brought it back so you and Steve could be part of the discussion. And I think that, that allowing commissioners to say, there isn't enough process, we need better goals, this is a lot of money, a lot of public money, we need to spend it in a way that, 
is consistent year to year uh, that, that reaches the highest standards of public use. That's, that's a fair request, and that's something we can learn from. And we can go forward from there. That's all. George? I think it's great that we're having a discussion um, to be able to utilize funds uh, as a first world decision. And wouldn't so many third world countries love to have the ability to even <clears throat> begin to have a discussion like this. So <clears throat> so the, we have to look at the positive side of this, is, is what I'm suggesting. We've got a resource. We, we use it uh, in positive ways. Uh, this will be a positive way. We've got future uh, opportunities. And, and we should uh, be be thankful. And, and I have to leave it about five minutes, Rob, so I'd love to vote on this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thank you very much for having the discussion, everybody. Um, uh, I will call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Opposed. I would make a motion to approve the resolution approving supplemental budget appropriations for the 2014 budget. Second. We have a first and a second. And again, these are things that we've had some discussion over. and. Uh, put into our year-end budget for next, uh, for 2014. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Next, we are moving to our second reading. We've got uh, three resolutions concerning the 2015 budget. Um, John's here. We did have first reading while uh, Rachel and Steve were out at the CCI conference. Um, and there was uh, a couple little discussion points about the budget process and that sort of stuff, but nothing really pressing in terms of the information that's been presented and scrutinized during our budget process. Which we've been attending Correct. the work sessions. Thank you. Um, so is there any discussion on numbers uh, four, five, and six? Um, do we take them separately or can we vote them all together? We don't have our attorney here. I think you need to take these separately. Okay. So the first one is a resolution summarizing revenues and expenditures for each fund and adopting a budget for Picking County, Colorado for the calendar year 2015. Do we have a motion for that? So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 The next is appropriating sums of money to various funds for Picking County, Colorado 2015 budget. We have a motion for that. Move to approve. Second. We have a first and a second. So is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 The next is lever uh, uh, levying general property taxes for 2014 um, to help defray the cost of government Picking County. Um, and its special districts for 2015. Do we have a motion for so removal? Second. We have a first and second. Any discussion? Yes, I'd like to make a question, point of order. Have we opened the public hearing on these? Because these are public hearings. Oh. So we not need to go <laughs> backwards. Go. Let's yeah. start off. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you, you can go, George, if you need to. <laughs> fine, fine. But, um, you don't have to start over. Okay, four, just... four, five, and six. I will open the public hearings on these, and we'll, re we'll reaffirm the votes for four and five. Does anybody in the audience want to make public comment on these items? Seeing none, I will, I will close public comment. I will go back to summarizing revenues and expenditures for each. Um, Motion to approve. Number four, motion to approve. Sorry about this, folks. We have a second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Number five, uh, appropriating sums to various funds. Motion to approve. We have a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And then the last one that we were on, levying general property tax funds to help defray the cost of government and its special districts. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, last, we've got an ordinance establishing fees for the Environmental Health Department and repealing and replacing um, Resolution uh, uh, 64, 
2010. And we had some discussion on this again while commissioners uh, Rachel and Steve were out of town at the CCI conference um, and we also had a work session on this. Nothing has changed since the work session that those, uh, I believe that the, both of the commissioners had attended, we had dropped one of the fees to zero in terms of um, being able to record some information and encourage people to have minor work permits processed through the Environmental Health Department was the change on that. Do we, uh, this is a public hearing. Anybody wishing to speak on this item may do so at this time. Seeing none, I will close the hearing and bring it back to the, uh, to the board. Do we have a motion for approval of the uh, establishing the new um, Environmental Health Department fees? So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? Steve? Well, I wanted to ask Heard about um, when people do these minor repairs on their septic systems, mm -hmm. are, are you aware of it at this point in any fashion, or is it just being done out there and with no oversight from you? For uh, the majority of them, I, I'm not aware of them. They're just repaired, and you know, some I do find out about at a later date, but most of them do not. Mm -hmm. So I, we felt like it was important with uh, some pipe repairs because of our use permit system. We should have a record of those repairs so that when we're doing the use permit itself, we have that evidence. Uh, the other piece that we don't capture that's part of that is a, a replacing a pump in a system. And uh, we should have that information on file so that when you know that house is sold, we know we can tell the owner your pump's three years old, your pump's 15 years old, your pump's 20 years old. Okay. So under this, the new system we're going into, mm -hmm. if somebody's doing any of these minor things, they need to get a permit. They do. Uh, uh, but uh, what you're wanting is to not charge for it because you're encouraging people to come get the permit. Is that is that the intent of the change? Yes, that's the intent. Um, however, it's something that they could do after the fact as well, uh, similar to some of the uh, building department fees. That was one of the pieces that we discussed. Um, you know, a lot of these are emergency repairs. They're done, you know, New Year's Eve, Christmas, you know, when, when it's not ideal to do it. And so it's, let's get this done so that it's finished. And then, you know, as long as we get the information, you know, 48, 72 hours after the fact, that's fine. It's not going to affect that piece. Okay. You don't want to be called out on New Year's Eve to go <laughs> <laughs> inspect something. <right? laughs> okay. Thank you. I, I have a question, if sure. I could. Is it okay? Yes. Um, living up in a rural area, I have a septic. So how would we know that if we're supposed to? Like, this is the first I've heard of Maybe so, I'm just an idiot. Hmm. No, I, what we'll do is um, we're waiting for software before we'll roll this out. So all we're doing is at least getting that, that fee in place. But we're going to have a contractor meeting in probably February or early March. We try to have one every year. And so we're going to alert the contractors of this piece so that we can, they'll know okay. that, that this permit will be in place. Okay. And then they would follow through and then they on would our behalf through. to... That's to request that permit. Correct, yeah, that's okay. how it happens okay. most of the time in my okay. previous experience. I'll pass that along to our owners. Okay, great. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, okay, so we do we have a motion? Do we did we get to that point? <laughs> we have one in the second and there was discussion public for Steve. Hearing. Public hearing? Uh, I already did the public hearing on this. <coughs> Um, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there any open discussion that we need to tackle? Um, I do have uh, two items for open discussion. One is a proposed letter uh, for the board to approve to members of the Colorado Oil and Gas Task Force. And while that's getting handed around, I'd just like to thank and acknowledge the board. We just completed our budget process and though we had a robust discussion around a portion of CMAC funds for this year and that really represents a little less than 0.1 percent of our uh, overall budget and you guys uh, did a tremendous amount of work I think staff did a tremendous amount of work uh, on this and and we reached a lot of agreement uh, going forward so I just want to acknowledge and thank you for all the time you guys collectively spent and the agreement we did find so I well, certainly thank all of our staff on our behalf Holly and John especially and then the letter that's in front of you um, you know and, and Rachel you may also want to come in here uh, 
but it is a, a general letter uh, really um, speaking to just a general sense as uh, the governor creates his task force on oil and gas, really supporting the concept of maintaining some level of local control uh, going forward uh, in the, the regulatory environment and such. And Rachel, I don't know. You know, in many ways, uh, this is a response to the CCI business meeting that was held when uh, Steve and I were in Colorado Springs. And uh, usually the business meeting of CCI is bylaw changes potentially or budget but a resolution was introduced by Weld County, uh, which carried the day despite some vigorous debate uh, to say that um, uh, the existing regulatory framework is sufficient. Um, and so they were basically kind of denouncing the governor's task force and the task force was put together uh, as part of a compromise that pulled all the oil and gas uh, ballot measures off of this past November's ballot that were competing on either side and they were going to put this task force together to see if they could continue to iron out the conflicts between surface occupancy and mineral rights. And so this is not endorsing uh, any single recommendation. They haven't made recommendations yet. But rather than this one uh, group kind of saying that we don't even want to look at the issue, uh, this is to say we appreciate the work of the task force members. They just held a very large hearing in Rifle last week on Wednesday. They're holding a few more across the state. But to say we look forward, as the very closing paragraph said, we look forward to reviewing the task force recommendations and thank you for your service. So uh, again, it's not, um, and Chris Selden um, drafted this for us in case they're wondering on the authorship. Um, so I would uh, ask the board's permission that we send the letter to this effect. Is that sufficient? This is exactly what I'm talking about, having a governor that puts a good process in place with good purpose statements. Mm -hmm. And that's what the task force is there for. So supporting their work as they move forward is I'm all in favor of that. Okay. Very good. Okay. okay. There you go, John. All right. Yeah. So Rob will prepare that. And that's uh, all I have for open discussion today. Thank you. Any uh, commissioner open discussion? I will uh, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody.